All right, welcome back everyone to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. Welcome back, Michelle. So today's question that we got asked, and you know, we've had a lot of questions on kidney transplant. Today's specific, what about nutrition for people who have gotten a kidney transplant? Okay, so we're going to talk about the, so there's three phases of organ transplant and there's different nutrition goals for each of those phases. So we'll talk about each one, um, but there's the pre-transplantation, acute post-transplant, and then chronic post-transplant. So in that uh, pre-transplantation, obviously that's someone who is on dialysis or they have late stage kidney disease and they're awaiting a kidney transplant. Really the nutrition goal here is that we are assessing and correcting for any deficiencies and making sure the person is, you know, as healthy as possible and at a healthy weight to go into surgery. So someone that is underweight, frail, malnourished, um, or on the other end, someone that is very obese, both of those have poor outcomes for kidney graft survival um, after transplantation. So that is a huge role of working with, you know, your renal dietitian in the pre-transplantation phase. The acute post-transplant phase is usually um, from transplant up to about six to eight weeks after you get the transplant. And really the goal here is that we need to um, help with the increased metabolic demands that come with surgery. So usually calorie and protein needs are both higher because of post-operative stress, as well as high corticosteroid use. So calorie needs can be as high as 30 to 35 calories per kilogram of body weight and protein about 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you're confused at all and like calculating that, usually in this acute post-transplant phase, you are working with a dietitian in the hospital um, after you have had the transplant and they can help you know, go over that with you. But some other considerations is um, because people with transplants and non-immunosuppressive drugs have are higher risk of um, high blood sugar, getting new onset diabetes, dyslipidemia, we, you really want to keep in mind, you know, more unsaturated fatty acids, less saturated fat, more complex carbs, less simple carbohydrates. And so all that taken is, is taken into account in that acute post-transplant phase, unless for whatever reason, someone can't meet their calorie needs um, and can't get the proper nutrition, then there might be more flexibility. But again, that dietitian that's in the hospital is likely going to be going over that with you. As far as, you know, a lot of times we think of restriction on sodium and potassium and fluids when people are on dialysis. And so once they have a transplant, typically as far as fluids go, it's usually unrestricted unless there's poor graft function, um, then you, there might, or edema or blood pressure issues, that's when sodium or fluids might continue to be restricted until um, that graft function improves. And then same thing with potassium. If blood levels are good, then usually potassium is unrestricted. The chronic post-transplant phase is obviously the longest phase, and that's usually over eight weeks. And really the main goals here is one, I mean, nutritionally to help someone keep that kidney and keep that graft functioning. But the other is to manage and help prevent all the comorbidities that come along with the immunosuppressive drugs um, post-transplant. So things like weight gain and obesity, high blood sugar, um, insulin resistance, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and osteoporosis. So when it comes to that Calorie wise and protein wise is generally the same as, you know, really keeping you at a healthy body weight, 25 to 35 calories per kilogram. Protein is really similar to what we see as recommendations for, you know, general people with kidney disease, but in earlier stages. And then you would adjust it based on your GFR um, post transplantation. So it would be anywhere from 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram protein or 0.8 to 0.9 for someone with diabetes. As I mentioned before, it's very, very important to be limiting those simple carbs and added sugar in the diet since high blood sugar is a common side effect of immunosuppressive medications. So simple carbs, you know, we think of refined grains, things like um, sugary cereals, pastries, donuts, pies, um, fruit juices, sodas, um, sweetened yogurts, all of those things you want to keep out of the diet as much as possible. And we want high fiber, complex carbs, whole grains, legumes, um, whole fruits, not juiced fruit, vegetables, uh, nuts and seeds. 
And from a the dyslipidemia standpoint, we want to limit the saturated fats, which is usually found in fatty cuts, meats, processed meats, cheeses, um, heavy creams, butter, and we want more of the unsaturated fatty acids, um, fatty acids that you would find in nuts, seeds, avocados. Um, other things, sodium, again, usually the, it's not a, it's pretty similar to general recommendation as, you know, up to 2000 to 2300 milligrams of sodium a day. Potassium is only restricted in this chronic post-transplant phase if someone has high levels, otherwise it's generally unrestricted. And then phosphorus, when it comes to that, usually you, of course, still want to avoid phosphorus additives. And then keep in mind that the plant sources of phosphorus are going to be less absorbed than the animal phosphorus, which are things that we talk about with kidney disease in general. From a vitamin and mineral standpoint, oftentimes post-transplant people might be put on a renal-specific vitamin or a B-complex, but some there are some nutrients that depending on the person and their lab values they, and medications they're on, they might need to supplement more. We talked about osteoporosis being common um, post-transplant, and big part of that is the corticosteroid use, but also people often have renal osteodystrophy before they even get the transplant. So that's where vitamin D supplementation might, ne might be needed depending on your labs. And then calcium, again, it's gonna depend on your intake, but usually it's only about 800 to 1500 milligrams a day is what's needed. And that would be supplement and intake from the diet combined. Uh, you might need to supplement iron, folate, or B12, depending on if anemia is present. B12, you definitely need to supplement if you are on a vegan, vegetarian, or mostly plant-based diet. Um, zinc is a common, um, nutrient that with corticosteroids, people can be low in. So if you don't get enough in your diet, you might need to supplement with zinc. And then same thing, low magnesium levels are associated with, um, like tacrolimus, um, cyclosporin. And so some of those immunosuppressive drugs. So magnesium levels for people post-transplant actually should be monitored fairly frequently and then supplemented if your levels are low. We oftentimes get asked about herbal supplements and botanicals. And that's something that, you know, unfortunately there, it's usually contraindicated because there's not enough research on it. And when someone is um, immuno, immune compromised, then any sort of herb or botanical that could poten potentially enhance the immune system um, theoretically could increase the chance of organ rejection, which we don't want. So Again, those are things like maybe echinacea and ginseng and stuff. Those you really want to be careful and talk with your provider about before taking that. Um, there are some food and drug interactions that you have to be mindful of with, again, some of these immunosuppressive drugs that people would be on post-transplant. And so those are grapefruit, pomegranate, bitter orange, and star fruit. Typically are recommended to avoid um, based on the medications you're on because they can change the absorption of those post-transplant medications. Another big thing nutrition-wise post-transplant is food safety. So again, in an immune compromised person, there's a higher risk of foodborne illness and infection. So just common things you want to be more mindful of and aware of, of course, raw fruits and veggies need to be washed well or cooked. Um, unpasteurized milk and cheese um, are more, more likely to give a foodborne illness, raw or undercooked meat, seafood, poultry, um, or shellfish, and then raw sprouts. So those are things you would specifically want to ask your doctor because food safety wise, higher risk of foodborne illness or infection. Another thing, not necessarily exactly nutrition, but is very important for for post-transplant is exercise. And so both aerobic exercise and resistance training are important, you know, the for better balance and better strength. But especially with because osteoporosis is common and such a concern with the corticosteroid use, the resistance training is, is very important. And then the aerobic training um, or exercises are important because of weight gain and high blood sugar and diabetes being common side effects post-transplant. Overall, I know that's a lot. Um, overall, nutrition matters before you get a transplant, right after you get a transplant, and then in the long term, whether it's been three years, five years, or 20 years post-transplant, nutrition matters. Um, I think one of the things that that really comes up is there's this big 
level of liberalization of your diet when you go from being very re restricted on dialysis to now you have this good functioning kidney and now the diet is a lot more liberalized. But again, you have to think of those things like weight gain, obesity, dyslipidemia, high blood sugar, diabetes, and osteoporosis, and really taking care of that kidney and, and of that graft. And to do that, being at a healthy weight, sleeping well, managing stress, exercising, and then having a diet that is healthy for your heart, it's protective for your kidneys, and um, really overall is whole, minimally processed, and high in fruits and veggies, and getting lots of whole plant foods. Those are things that you can be doing post-transplant to help keep that kidney graft. Hope that answers your guys' questions. I know that's a lot of information. Of course, I recommend working with a dietitian one-to-one -one because depending what stage you're at or what phase of transplantation, your needs, you can see, they can vary a lot, but a dietitian can help individualize for you, whether it's been three weeks since you've had a transplant or it's been 15 years since you've had a transplant. 